Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, lover of all things beauty, cosmetics, skincare, all that. And we are back to continue on the best skincare of 2023 series. We've done cleansers, we've done toners, essences, mist, we've done serums, and now we're on to moisturizers. Arguably, again, I, I knew I said toners was my favorite category. Moisturizers to me, because I love any and all finish, any and all textures, moisturizers to me is where I have a lot of fun, especially in trying out, you know, different skin feels, different finishes, different actives. So I got a whole plethora of moisturizers here from super lightweight gels to rich creams and bombs. I'm basically going to be doing this video going through the spectrum of all those textures. So depending on which type of texture you like, you can go to the timestamp down below for that specific section. Obviously, just because these are my favorite discoveries and launches of this year does not negate my prior year's favorites. So do note that, but let's get into it starting with gel moisturizers. You know I have oily acne prone skin, so to me I always lean towards gel moisturizers. And this year there's a really interesting selection of gel moisturizers. First option I could not find, don't know where it is, but this is from Trey. Trader Joe's, their ultra hydrating gel moisturizer. Obviously, I did a whole video kind of talking about how I went to Trader Joe's to finally try out their skincare. It's super cheap and surprisingly, it's really, really good. With this one, it's not as simple of a formulation as their hydrating serum was, but fundamentally, it's a really plush, very velvety, like hydrating, lightweight gel moisturizer. Oil-free, great for oily skin. It feels really luxe and it's like $5, which is the most like again, mind blowing part of it. Ingredients wise, it's alcohol, fragrance, and essential oil free. Features glycerin, hyaluronic acid. You have a couple extracts. You have milk thistle. You got birch leaf. You got green tea to help kind of soothe, give a little bit of antioxidant benefit. You got panthenol, vitamin E, squalene, and aloe. So overall, really hydrating. You have some soothing ingredients up in there. It feels so plush. Costs you like nothing. Trader Joe's. Don't sleep on it. Another option, and I forgot where I bought this. This is from La Roche Posay. It's their Cicaplast Gel B5. This is a, it's not a light gel. It's actually a little bit of a thicker gel texture, but it highlights panthenol, that B5 element. And I like to use this as a more targeted moisturizer. Again, it, it's in the gel category, probably should be later on, but this is a little bit more rich, but I wouldn't say it's quite a balm yet. It's just like a thick gel. Ingredient call outs, 5% panthenol. This does have metacasticide. It has zinc and copper gluconate. And so those are going to support skin hydration, skin moisturization. Panthenol. It soothes, it conditions, it hydrates. Panthenol to me is a superstar, holy grail, like all star ingredient. Love, love, love Panthenol. I'm always going to highlight it and call it out when it's in a product. Great product though. Get your hands on it. If you want the benefits of Cicaplast Bomb, but you don't like the emolliency of that one because it can get really emollient, this is a really good option, especially because of that Panthenol. From Thayer's, this is their Let's Be Clear Water Cream. I mentioned this in another video. Thayer's is really doing a heavy duty PR rebrand because they're not that astringent witch hazel toner anymore they have a lot of really great formulas this year they launched a few different moisturizers this was my personal favorite this is their oily to combination skin focused moisturizer super lightweight water gel it's very hydrating ingredient call outs azelaic acid niacinamide hyaluronic acid ceramides cholesterol and licorice extract it's not a matte finish but it's more of a natural to kind of glowy finish very oily skin appropriate they really target pore care for the marketing around this the azelaic acid in this i can't speak to the amount in there i think it's like five percent so it's lower than i would like to see so i can't guarantee you're going to get all these kind of benefits around pores and blemishes and all that with the azelaic acid so i like to see her niacinamide targets pores targets blemishes targets oiliness ceramides and cholesterol i was kind of gagged to see because i associate those with richer textures this is not a rich texture at all but it helps to nourish and support skin barrier overall win 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 again it's not a matte finish they don't claim it to be they just say it's a good moisturizer i think it's oil free for oily skin blemish prone skin just because it's a texture that's more suitable to the skin types and it's not heavy or greasy this was the biggest gag to me this year i don't know why it's slept on this for so long. I don't think this was a new launch. I'm not sure. This is from The Ordinary. This is their Natural Moisturizing Factors plus Beta-Glucan. Beta-Glucan, if you don't know, it's an ingredient that primarily focuses on soothing as well as hydrating the skin. This is a gel, but like a pure, pure gel texture. This looks like, you know, the Eco Styler gel, like that clear ass gel. That's what this looks like, but in like moisturizer form. It's super lightweight. This dries down. It leaves a like a very natural to like semi like satin matte finish. It's very refreshing on the skin. In true ordinary fashion, it's a very simple moisturizer formula. It has the amino acids, urea, sodium PCA, which are natural moisturizing factors. That's the name. You have the beta-glucan in there. You have allantoin. You have glutamic acid. So it's going to really just support skin moisturization through hydration. Beautiful texture, beautiful finish, super affordable. Again, I don't know why I slept on this, but it's a great product if you have oily skin and you don't like a shiny finished moisturizer. Another standout product this year. This is from Cetaphil. Cetaphil? 
I don't talk about them a lot just because their sunscreens disappoint me. But this is a moisturizer I bought. I was at a Walmart and I saw this and I was like, oh, it's interesting because it highlights having 0.5% salicylic acid. You know, I love, 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 love a low percent salicylic acid because you can use it very frequently with minimal irritation and you get a lot more of the benefit from it through regular use like that. This also features, they say prebiotics and bisabolol. Those help soothe, support the moisture barrier, the microflora of the skin, if you will. And this also features zinc gluconate, great for blemish prone skin, berry and mulberry extracts, great for targeting the appearance of pigmentation. Liquor shoot extracts, same. Allantoin bisabolol skull cap root help to soothe the skin. And this is a lightweight matte gel texture. When I say matte, I'm not gonna say like it's like powder powder matte, but it doesn't dry down shiny. Again, very natural to satin matte finish. So this is a great moisturizer if you're blemish prone, you're oily, you're targeting pores, and you want something that's gonna be as natural a finish as possible. Great for men. If you got a man in your life who doesn't like to be shiny, but they are, you know, blemish prone, they get ingrowns. Great option. From Torden, I mentioned their serum in my best of serums video. This is their Balanceful Cream. This line, again, just left me very gagged. The textures, the experience, the finish for all these products in this green line from them, bonkers. This, again, features that Sika plus derivative, so you're getting that soothing benefit. You get some antioxidants from that, but really it's that capital oil salicylic acid. Salicylic acid derivative that is very effective, really great for blemish prone skin, oily skin. Love to see her, especially because she's more gentle. And you also have Panthenol in here as well, so more conditioning, very hydrating, but very lightweight, very silky, very plush texture. Great, great sensory on these. They really formulated the hell out of these. And then from La Roche-Posay, this is their Tolerian, Tolerian, and French would be Tolerian, Double Repair Matte Moisturizer. My husband bought this. We were in Puerto Rico and we just saw matte gel moisturizer. We were like, let's try it out. And I will say it's a very interesting texture because it's a richer gel feeling. So very similar to the this one from La Roche-Posay. The tea behind this is that it features prebiotic thermal water. That's like the Ro La Roche-Posay like thermal water. So prebiotic, yeah, prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic. Prebiotic is like the food that the biotics survive off of. Probiotic is the biotics themselves, the <laughs> bacteria that live on the skin. And then postbiotic is the byproduct of them. And right now there's a big push with like, what's better, the prebiotic or the postbiotics? This features prebiotic water. I know they're not called biotics. It's just, it makes more sense with the name. You also have their Ceramide 3 complex. You have niacinamide, glycerin. Then you have oil absorbing powders in this, perlite and silica, which actively absorb oil. But see what this is, I don't think it's as matte as they want it, as they advertise it to be. I find the Cetaphil one a lot more matte, but this is interesting texture. It's definitely, it feels more nourishing. Whereas this one, it's a moisturizer, but it doesn't feel like a moisturizer. It's not like super nourishing. I think this one has because of the slip and the overall texture of it, it feels like you have a little bit more nourishing moisturizer benefits out of this one. You do have some skincare benefits, again, from the niacinamide, you have the ceramides, the glycerin, and all that. It's not as much as I thought it'd be, but it's very interesting texture. I will say when I was testing it, I was in Puerto Rico. It was very hot, very muggy, so I wasn't expecting it to work miracles, but it's a very interesting launch to see, and I like that they approached it from a, it's a gel moisturizer that's lightweight, but it's going to actively absorb that. The sebum. Now moving up to gel creams and some light lotion textures. I don't love a lotion, I've come to learn. I don't, it's, it's just not my favorite texture category. The one exception in a holy girl is Stradia's, what was called liquid gold, now it's called lipid gold, rebrand, but it has a little bit more of an emollient. And to me, that's the big difference. Gels focus on gelling agents, more hydration, and to occlude, they use some very lightweight, like polymers and acrylates and whatnot. Lotions, they have a lot more emollients to them. And emollients in themselves, they act more as lightweight occlusives, but then the occlusives that they use, they're gonna be a little bit more lightweight as well. Whereas rich moisturizers, creams, balms, that's like occlusive heavy. You have the methicones, you got mineral oils, you got heavier waxes and whatnot in those, butters. So lotions to me, I don't like the emollients you get from a lot of them. So that's where I'm like, Ugh. but they're great for the body. The two I have here in this category, one of them is a gel cream. This is from Skin Fix. Their Skin Barrier Restoring Gel Cream. Again, I mentioned in my series video, they excel at texture. They excel at a luxury skin feel, very, very nice, haptics, user haptics with their products. They really focus on rheology and the texture of the products to spread really nice, feel really nice on the skin. Ingredient callouts on this, you have niacinamide, zinc PCA, allantoin. You have a saccharide isomerate and squalane. So those are gonna support skin barrier function, gonna help soothe the skin, support skin barrier, and really increase skin hydration. So theoretically, very simple formulation, but it feels nice, it feels luxe, and it's really just working to support skin moisturization, but not be so heavy. And then a new launch from Crave, their Oil La La. I got the sample of this. 
this, I think it's like August or September. So I've been using this for a minute. And if I could just describe it to compare it to something else, it feels like a much lighter liquid gold, but still has some emolliency, still has a lotion quality to it. It's a very interesting product. Basically, Leah's approach with developing this was with a acne prone skin, especially very blemish prone skin, one of the theories slash the research behind it has to do with the specific composition of fatty acids in sebum. And for those who are more prone to acne prone skin, there is more of one type of fatty acid as opposed to another. So with that, the approach behind this was formulate something that essentially rebalances that out with a richer concentration of the fatty acid that your sebum for acne prone skin is lacking, basically. I think it's linoleic acid. Don't quote me on that one. With that being said, the main formulation points behind this are it's an oil blend. And that oil blend, again, has that specific component of the fatty acid concentration, that ratio worked out. You have some derivatives to help soothe. You have a few peptides in here that also, to some extent, claim to soothe. But realistically, those are, and here's a little bit of the interesting talk around this, is that they're epidermal growth factors. So there's specific peptides that are those EGFs, which have skin benefits, but I guess that's like a controversial ingredient category. I was not aware of that. I don't formulate with those. I don't know a lot about them necessarily, because again, when it comes to peptides, I kind of like, I don't focus so much on those. But it's very interesting, because I remember going on the website and the specific disclaimer was, if you are prone to cancer, Answer. like be weary consult with the doctor and I was like what's that about and then I researched more of the ingredients and saw that so they I don't know if it's necessarily a concentration thing or what they really say those peptides are to soothe they are epidermal growth factors though so do with that what you will but I just like the texture of this it's very nice very lightweight it is nourishing and I've seen a good amount of people really say like oh this is great for blemish prone skin it hasn't it hasn't cost me to break out very few things do but on to creams or richer moisturizer we're not at bombs yeah I got a separate category for bombs these are more rich more occlusive heavy moisturizers, more emollient moisturizers that are great for more dry skin. I got oily skin and I still love them. Another Thayer's product, this is their Barrier Bestie Ultra Whip Cream and that's what it is. It's a whipped cream texture that just feels so plush and so velvety on the skin. It really focuses on a lot more of that ceramide, fatty acids, butters, ingredient category. It's a very simple formulation. Looking at the ingredients of the call outs, that's it. Ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids, butters, phytosphingosine again, a really good ingredient for soothing the skin, but it's great at it works with the microbiome of the skin. It's great for acne prone skin. So if you have dry acne prone skin, this could be a good product for you. I just like it as a night mask, to be honest. It feels lightweight on the skin. It's very nourishing, but it's not heavy and greasy. So it's not like I'm sticking to my pillow, but it's nourishing. So you still have to use this with my retinoids. Yeah, there's, don't sleep on them now. Go to the store, look at the options that they have. They're very, very nourishing, very good skin ingredients. They're not astringent, they're not drying. And this is a good simple moisturizer at a drugstore price. One of my favorite product discoveries of the year from Dr. Jar, this is their Ceramide and Ectoin Infused Cream Ectoin, coming from a chemist perspective, gorgeous ingredient. Ectoin is derived from these bacteria where they basically thrive in very, very harsh environments. And so through that, it's an ingredient that helps to support the skin's defenses. It's a very, very hydrating, soothing ingredient. On top of that, it has panthenol, it has ceramides, cholesterol, shea butter. So it's a very, very nourishing texture. When you first like apply it or you first have it in your fingers, it feels a little bit like a paste, I'm gonna be honest with you, but it shears out really, really nicely. This treads the line between a cream and a balm. So what I usually do is I use this again in tandem with my retinoids or on areas where my skin's like very sensitized, which for me is usually right here on the eye area. That's where this really comes in handy to really nourish, but also to really soothe. A Korean option from Sioris. This is their Deep Inner Barrier. This I bought on a whim from Yes Style. And I think it's because it's a cream that really touts Tamanu and Macadamia oil, which Tamanu, if you're not aware, Crave uses in their Great Barrier Relief, which is one of my all-time favorite skincare products. And it's a barrier cream. So I was very interested in it. Ingredient call-outs, it features centella, green tea, skullcap root, licorice, and chamomile extracts. Most of those form a complex called Bsasm, B-S-asm, that's green. Allentoin, beta-glucan, tamanu oil, yuzu water is the first ingredient, it's like a 60 something percent. And the brand's very much like, it's good for anti-aging and preventing fatigue skin. To me, it's yuzu water, so it's maybe like a very antioxidant mineral rich water. I don't know. But you have a lot of ingredients to soothe the barrier. You have a lot of ingredients to promote skin moisturization. Tamanu and macadamia oil, they are, they're oils, they're emollients, they are soothing. And with the, intro, the texture of this is not, I love Great Berry Relief, both for the soothing and the texture. It's a nice nourishing texture. This feels like, these two textures live in a similar world. This feels more like a paste until it's warmed up. Whereas this just feels like, this feels like an oil rich balm, but it's not oily, if that makes any sense. When you apply it, it doesn't leave you shiny and greasy, like it sets down. My husband says it's very similar to like a hand 
cream. Where like, you know when you apply a hand cream, you want it to nourish, but you don't want it to be greasy or sticky because you still need to use your hands. That's the texture. Regardless, it's really, really nice. It's really soothing. I actually will take this and I'll mix my retinoids in with this. So I'll do like a couple pumps of this, a couple pumps of my retinol, spread that everywhere. That's the nighttime routine when I'm feeling really lazy, but really nice. I know Cioris is a little bit weird. They're like a Korean brand that's really big on very natural. I think this product on your stuff specifically has a Cosmos approved label on it, which indicates like natural ingredients. And then a surprise hit this year. This is from Summer Fridays. This is a jet lag mask. This, I worked at Sephora back in 2017. This was one of our hottest products back then. It's still one of Sephora's hottest products six years later. I'm gonna be real with you. Summer Fridays to me is like a white girl brand. And if you know what that means, you know what that means. It's like the kind of girl who shops at Madewell, Aritzia, Daily Starbucks kind of deal. And so I was like, what's the hype behind this? But she's really cute. And if I have to dissect it, really, this was a brand that got a lot of people who weren't into skincare into skincare. And I say that because I have friends who are like, oh, I use this product and it changed my skin. And I'm like, that's just a simple moisturizer. But then I realized they don't really do much. So a simple, effective moisturizer is game changing for them. That's what this is. It's a very simple formulation overall. It really just focuses on on ceramides, cholesterols, fatty acids. It has niacinamide, it has a vitamin C derivative I've never heard of before, but overall, it's really just helping to promote skin moisturization in a very rich texture. If you look at the marketing behind this, they really say, oh, it's a mask, it's a primer, and it's a very rich moisturizer. It functions for all things, depending on how you wanna use it. But especially as a primer, again, it's for people who don't normally nourish their skin like that, and plus the texture of it, it it's very makeup gripping. So it's like a, game changer and helping to smooth down the skin so you have a really nice canvas for makeup. It's also now fragrance and alcohol free. I think it had essential oils which people were like, it's not great for sensitive skin. Well now it's great for sensitive skin. It also features allantoin, phytosphingosine, bisabolol, cucumber extract, panthenol. So a really good mix of nourishing ingredients, conditioning ingredients, hydrating ingredients. Simple concepts, but they just really marketed it really well. I will say there's also a lot of, again, similar to skin fix, there's focus put on the overall textural experience of this, the user haptics. So it feels Feels nice to use but it is a really good product i was very shocked by that so as a jet lag mask i get it because i was on way too many 8 10 12 hour flights this year and this really does the work this is i think my second do of this she's cute last category bombs these are richer textures these are really skin protectants they're highly occlusives most of these i think are actually like petroleum based but first one on the list is from one of my favorite brand launches of the year disclosure i am biased really good friends with this person also obsessed with them low-key from prequel the skin utility ointment this is top five favorite product of the year don't know where it ranks i know that the jin jin sung essence that's top number that's number one this is definitely top five this is from prequel which is dr samantha ellis's line which great dermatologist amazing content creator one of the most gorgeous stunning humans i've ever seen in my life sometimes i just watch her videos and just on mute just watch her because she's stunning obsessed with her but the tea behind this is that this is a petrolatum based skin protecting ointment it is occlusive but it's so elegant this is much more elegant than straight Vaseline. It's much more elegant than the Aquaphor and the Cerave skin ointment. You know that one that was like really viral? Much more elegant than that. So I think it's a great option if you love slugging or love a rich occlusive for maybe more combo to oily skin. Also, another bias. I'm very obsessed with the chemist behind all of Prequel's items. Her name is Chrissy. She's like a rock star to me. And there's a lot of really cool formulation elements behind this, specifically the ingredient call out. So this features 45% petrolatum, and then it has a specific complex that is called called the Photo V Defense, and it essentially forms this protective film or shield on the skin to protect it from environmental aggressors and stressors and all that, AKA free radical damage. We wanna prevent that. And then it also has something called Sim Repair. That's another complex. It features three barrier lipid similar components as well as Bisabolol. So it's helping to, again, support skin moisturization, helping to soothe the skin. So overall, just things to occlude, things to protect, things to slug with, but just a really beautiful texture. This is This, this one is brand new, because I'm still burning through the PR sample we got sent ages ago. You don't need a lot of it. A little bit goes a long way. But when I mentioned in my series video that the Medicaid like burned my eyelids, this is what I reached for to help soothe that and calm that because it's a very neutral formula and therefore it's not going to irritate, compromise skin. Another really cool launch from a chemist perspective from Experiment. This is their buffer jelly. Lisa, who's one of the founders of this, is a chemist. So I always love to see what they launch because she puts a lot of thought into it. This specifically, again, it's for micro slugging. This only has 3% of petrolatum in it. But the 
idea is you're getting a really nice, really elegant, occlusive product. Aside from the petrolatum, it has 0.5% of an epidermal lipid complex, and that features ceramides and fatty acids and acai sterols. You have 80% biolipid blend. So those are these different oils that, again, fatty acid concentration, really good for supporting skin barrier moisturization, skin barrier function. And you have a complex called Unisoothe, which helps to soothe. I think this is just a really cool product, really cool texture, really nice, really cool formulation concepts to create a really light slugging texture. And I am biased, obviously, love the formulator, love the founder behind this, really cool product. And Experiment's a really cool brand with two, well, technically three products launched. I think they're doing really cool things and I'm really excited to see what else they launch. And then the last moisturizer from Prequel again. I have this here because it's technically classified as a skin protectant. This is their Barrier Therapy Skin Protectant Cream. Look at the size of this. Like, look at how huge this is. The thing with Prequel is everything's super affordable because you get so much product. That's because it's meant to be used for face and body. Formulation points behind this is that it's basically a skin protectant cream. It's very rich that features colloidal oats, which helps to soothe the skin. Aside from that, you have allantoin, adenosine, ceramides, cholesterol. It's a very simple formulation. It's a little bit more rich and creamy and it has that colloidal oat, which is something I really like to see. But this is just, again, a really nice, rich moisturizer. It feels very elegant on the face. It's not greasy and sticky and oily. And those are always big pluses for me because I have stained a lot of bed sheets and pillows with oils and actives and this doesn't doesn't do that. But again, simple to the point, great for sensitive skin types, very, very compromised skin types. If you're like me and you're melting your face off pretty much every other week, just the one. But with that, those are my favorite moisturizers from gels to lotions to creams to bombs of 2023. Let me know where any of these, some of your favorites, do you have differing opinions from me? What were some of your favorite moisturizers of the year? Sound off in the comments. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I go live with the remaining videos of my best of 2023 series. Again, check the playlist below to check the other videos out if you haven't already. Don't forget to give the video thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.